And welcome back to the uh, Edge Robot World Tour 2015. First stop here in uh, North America at LAN ETS in uh, Montreal. Uh, I'm Trufan from Overclocking TV. This is uh, Xiala from uh, Edge Robot forward slash Overclocking TV. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> so we want to focus a little bit more about uh, what was happening today. Uh, and that was the World Series for Amateur. Yes, yeah, so the the like you say that the at the World Two events there's, there are competitions and the World Series for Amateur is specifically designed for people that have no experience in overclocking at all or very little. So the way it works is uh, to um, to address the audience of the LAN party here at the LAN ETS and get uh, give the gamers the chance to uh, gamers or actual visitors of the LAN party the chance to simply come come along and we provide them systems. We give them a workshop to e educate them about overclocking, so we teach them the very basics of uh, how to clock your CPU, and up that's about it, actually. Yeah. And there's not, there's not so much time to go even into the XMP things or even just basic memory stuff. But yeah, so just CPU benching, and then after that, they can uh, compete in a small competition amongst them, so there's no need to uh, for them to face the guys with LN2. They're just amongst noobs all together. And yeah, it, it was quite interesting to see how, how fast today the guys could, um, from close to no knowledge at all, some, well, most people knew about computers, but they had no knowledge about how to do overclocking to actually be able to pull out some scores and actually already challenge their friends sitting next to them and saying, hey, can you, can you beat that one? Yeah, actually, I, I like the I like the way that uh, some of the guys, that the, the gamers that are actually on the, at the here at the LAN ETS, they came up there and said, "Oh yeah, um, I heard about overclocking. I know a little bit the concept, but I never really tried. And I, I never tried on my own computer because I don't want to break anything or uh, I don't want to make it unstable for the game, etc." So they came in and said, "Oh, okay. So uh, here are my friends. They don't know anything about that." Yeah. And what we did is the workshop, and we were explaining them, okay, so if you want to overclock your CPU, you need to raise the multiplier and so on, and explaining, like, what are the goals, why we do it, and, uh, and, and all that. And uh, that was interesting to see that some people that just came here uh, to uh, just as visitors or just to see what the other guys going to be doing, and end up uh, uh, participating in this competition yeah. that way. Usually, I think people are just simply uh, this... this um how you say this kind of cliche thing that if you overclock you're gonna kill hardware and I think uh, most of the people that came to the workshop maybe with that idea in mind and I think after after a few minutes of the workshop it is very clear that there's uh, technically just almost no way for them to to kill anything today even if you go brute force on voltage or anything it just it's just gonna crash just crash not gonna burn straight away and then you reboot and it's all fine all by magic so I mean like it's yeah this People just realize that and then they just, they, they're already more comfortable having fun with it. Yeah. And especially because uh, we did provide the systems, um, there is no, uh, no impact on their own systems, even though they still want to play games after for the, for the events. That's why when you overclock, you don't want to, usually you don't want to have that on your main system, because if you, if you play games or you need it for work or pff, if you, I don't know, if you still live at your parents' place, it's probably your parents' computer somehow, so you, you just don't want to do that. Um, so, yep, usually having a bench system dedicated to benching is a first step to, to move forward into, in this community. Indeed. So let's, take, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the few scores and the few people that did compete. Uh, there's still officially eight hours uh, for, for that to be, uh, to be open, but I don't think there's going to be anyone uh, coming down to compete in, uh, in, this, uh, in this challenge. Well, for for f during the night. Yeah, it's it's 10 p.m. here, like 10:17. So, I guess most of the gamers are actually either busy with tournaments, but I think most of the tournaments also are over now, at least for the qualifier phases. So, uh, most of the guys are relaxing and I think uh, they getting are all ready at for the bar. I think they're all at the, bar, at the party yeah. for the bar. They have a, like a water pong uh, a oh, challenge that's there. It. So that's what we are missing out, right? Yeah. So and we should cut the stream and just go there then? No, no, we should just do beer, beer pong on the stream right here. <laughs> like just grab some, grab some CPU pods and just pong it into the pot. <laughs> chip pong. And chip just pong, hey, that's it. You just have to, to, run the, to launch the chip in the, that's it. In the, hey, in the container. There you go, new game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the, some of the 20 overclockers that did participate today uh, after the workshop. 
the first is uh, underscore from actually they are all from Canada except two guys uh, yeah. I uh, shift FX 55 and Mr. Breeze but actually Mr. Breeze is not allowed to compete in the uh, well, actually, he, he, he is allowed is, to compete he is in the because, amateur. Um, he is not the part of the Extreme League at h But, but so he will be a part of the Extreme League right after this weekend because he's using LN2 uh, for this weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, it uh, all depends if he submits his submissions for points or not. Indeed. This is how it works. So as long as you don't claim points for Extreme submissions, then they are not moving you to Extreme. So it's fine for now. <laughs> Let's see how long that uh, lasts. So the first uh, person to uh, to be at the top is uh, someone called uh, Underscore. Uh, if we look mm -hmm. uh, at his uh, score, it is a Pentium G3258. That's the same one everyone else uses. Uh, everyone used the same CPU, the, the Intel Pentium Anniversary Edition. Uh, it was uh, running that one at uh, 4.5 uh, gigahertz. Yep. Uh, the final uh, score is at 323 mark. So he's actually in the in the top league. Uh, that's uh, that does represent like a 42% increase of the frequency of the yeah. uh, of the CPU. Uh, well, we as we as we say, like yeah. that's that's the people that have uh, maybe done overclocking in a bit in the past, but they didn't add uh, a lot of training. That's that's amateur. So that's people that basically just even those guys the yeah, with very low or very little knowledge did also took the, the workshop to just learn more before they actually were doing it. So I think it's, it's just great to see that people that, that, that don't know too much are actually ready to, to learn more this way and not just go straight away and pretend they know everything because you always have some cool stuff to know, especially you, Truth Man, we're doing the workshop with Peter and you guys have some great knowledge to share and experience, so it's, it's definitely a good thing to, to take on when you attend. The second person to um, to to be actually to be in this ranking, this temporary ranking, is Twenty Sen. Um, same CPU at four point five. Uh, it, it's actually like forty megahertz less than the than underscore, but he's scoring less too at the same time, like three hundred nineteen uh, marks. So yeah. we can see there that's it's not only about the roof frequency of the CPU, but you can also get some of the tweakings involved. Uh, I know that underscore uh, spent some time uh, changing some of the settings for the for the tweaking. I was sitting next to him when he was benching, and um, so he he very quickly after ten minutes into the so there, it was thirty minutes round. So very quickly he realized that well he was kind of hitting a kind of a, a limit that was mainly impacting his efficiency. So no matter w how high he was going on the on the overall CPU frequency, it was not actually increasing much the score at all, like by very, 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 very little steps. So then he started to uh, look around uh, on the other settings that he could tweak in the XTU, such as the cache voltage and uh, different things like that. So he even did a bit of Googling to figure out what was going on and what each of the settings were for. So um, yeah, he, he was able to, to figure out I think he's he's the one that figured out the best among everyone how to how to actually bench XTU with that chip. Um, interesting to see that even if uh, these people are amateur or rookie as we call them, so that's people that are uh, been active for uh, less than three months. Less than three months. Actually, a lot of these people just register today. They didn't add any yeah. account. I know that on just got uh, add an account before. I think there was but only most maybe of them three is, of them had yeah. an account. Yeah. So. But most of them just did register at that time, so they they don't add any, they didn't have uh, any account before. Uh, if you look uh, at the third score, that's uh, although 319 uh, 19 marks, and then you're going to ask, oh, why the second one get 8 points and then the third one get only 6 points? It's just a matter of who did submit that the first. Yes. And uh, to be honest, there's not much difference because uh, the the, it doesn't the matter. final system yes. uh, is not going to base only on this ranking. We're going to select the best people from this ranking and then we're going to make them compete on a one versus one basis. It, w it would matter, yeah, if it was a competition finals, maybe. But here, since it was all qualifiers only, I mean, it's it's perfect this way. It's not really a big deal. So, yeah, the, the, the earliest arrived gets the highest spot. Indeed. Uh, if we look uh, at uh, X300X uh, on the first place, uh, you have the CPU at 4.4 GHz, so then it's like 313 uh, mark for XTU. Then the fifth people is actually the latest, peop uh, latest person to be in front of the entraîneur, of the, the, the trainers. 
Yeah. And if we look at his uh, score, that, oops, uh, wrong one, that's going to be 4.4 uh, uh, gigahertz and 313, although that's going to be the same concept, so yes, there's, a, there's the two times the tie uh, for there. So we can see that underscore got a, like some, uh, some nice leak. Uh, we can see that everyone was maximum 4.5 gigahertz. Yeah, uh, most of them were around like 4.3, 4.4. I know some guys uh, ran it 4.6, but they were not getting a better score. So, and no matter what they were changing from that that point onwards, it was just resulting in a crash. So everyone decided to just uh, tune it down and look for something else. Indeed, and uh, there's some uh, some other people. Let's pick let's pick one in the like one of the US guy, first US guys to uh, to be there. It did bench at 4.1 gigahertz. Uh, for uh, two, uh, 297 marks, not even three, uh, 300, too bad, but then uh, maybe uh, better luck next time. So we're going to select some of these guys uh, for tomorrow, for, mm -hmm. the, for the final, and uh, that's going to be uh, broadcasted live, uh, although at the same time, so we, I think we're going to start around like, uh, maybe uh, somewhere around 11, yeah, 11-ish, 11 yeah. you know, like it depends if, well, like you say, there's a party going on at the LAN ETS tonight, so we're just... Um, we wanted to do it earlier, but you know, most people are going to be probably very s tired or sleeping still. So, yeah, uh, from 11 onwards, let's say it might, it will take place. So hopefully, everyone <laughs> will show up. Well, if you know, if you you're selected and you don't show up, well, then the other guy just wins the match. That's it. Or we can give the space to someone else unless well, there's. Well, no if the other guy can make it, right? Yeah, it's always the same. Uh, same kind of issue. Anyway, um, that was for the World Series for Amateur. So that was, uh, this uh, is still open for a few hours, but this one is uh, open to anyone actually, like any gamers or any uh, visitors to the LAN, uh, LAN ETS event. Yeah. Um, that was all on air cooling, all on the G3258 CPU from Intel. Uh, the main board was uh, were all based on the Z97 chipset. Yes. Although, although we have the... Um, we had the uh, I'm gonna say that the same coolers and that was air cooling uh, for uh, for the for the cooling on the on the systems all the same. I think it's a cooler master something. Yeah, it was uh, some some. Well, anyway, that's cooler. a regular air cooling. That uh, even if you have less that at, at something place. better than stock. Coolers. Yeah. <laughs> and although like the same SSDs and the same RAM and the same PSU for everyone, so mm. uh, everyone had almost the st had all had the same system except that the brand of the yeah. of the main board. So yeah, so the amateurs uh, were provided sim uh, system for the simple reason that well they could not bring up their gaming rigs so um, to make it very accessible that was was the plan. But then on the other side, the uh, extreme guys, so the people participating in the bench party, were not provided systems. But instead of that, uh, for the competition, we opted for a, a different style of competition where you would actually value the uh, the performance uh, of the overclocker for one benchmark in comparison to what people have at HDOIBOT in general. So, so you, make, you made them compare themselves to the world and... In uh, a local competition. In a local competition. That, that's actually uh, interesting to see that. How can you compete yeah. in the local competitions and make sure that you uh, bring the best out of you have worldwide? Well, so it's very simple. Um, at at HDOIBOT, if you rank, uh, for example, in SuperPi, with a very specific set of hardware, then you, um, if you rank high enough, then you get hardware points for that. So for that s set of hardware, for example, if it's a 4770K CPU, then you get hardware points for that result because you ranked, with, I don't know, let's say top 10 or something like that. So also what is important to know is that the more popular your hardware is, the more uh, the more points you can get for that specific submission because of course it means it's harder to get to the top. So you get more hardware points for that. So the way we did it today is that uh, we announced the benchmarks ahead, so a week ahead before the, before the event. And the guys uh, that were already planning to probably bench something on their own, anyway, usually you bench something on your own because you already have some kind of targets mm -hmm. somewhere, not just simple personal targets. So you're looking at the rankings and you know, hey, yeah, here I can actually get something and get more points for the leaks, which are partly based on the hardware points. Um, so yeah, so like this way, people that can come with the hardware actually have a decent chance to get points in there without having to actually compete against 
who has the best golden ship in the room in or the room who got or the, 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 the most the, the most the powerful money or, or, or the or the most or just money. the more the most luck. Yeah. If you have a, if you gave everyone CPUs no matter how strong you bin it um, no matter how much money you spend on the bidding, why well, doesn't there's always going to be one better chip than there's always other. a margin of error in any systems, especially in overclockings. We can see that in the, all of the competitions, yeah. like the past uh, the past uh, major competition, like the MSI MOA, uh, stuff like that. Like the binning issue always come back uh, to life, and that was actually a, a way to yeah. kick that on. So the um, the HW World Series for extreme overclockers uh, that uh, was based on the three stage. Uh, the first stage was uh, SuperPi 1M hardware point, so that was uh, what uh, Xiala was explaining just a minute ago. Yep. The second stage was um, a target score, I'm going to come back to this one a bit later. And the third stage is a Cinebench R15, if I'm right. Um, and although at the, the special thing that even if you get a strong CPU, you, you can still compete uh, against everyone else that uh, have like a dual core CPU or four core CPU. Even if you have like an eight core CPU, you can still uh, participate. You can still participate, and you all have your chance. Just divided by it. <laughs> So let's go back to the stage one, Supervise 1M hardware points. Okay. Uh, you can see the competition page right here. Uh, so the hardware points is you get the mo you get more points, uh, especially if you go if you the do higher a you rank good in a most in a popular hardware category. So let's open the the Rathbars one for as an example. So he got 33.2 hardware points for that Supervise submission. And if you open it up, so he was benching on Intel Pentium E5200. So it's actually not new. That's that's uh, that's well, no. like uh, LG775. Yeah, he actually. So he he won, he won the stage of a competition with I think legacy is going on, but with uh, something we could call as legacy hardware. I mean, he's benching vintage Asus Rampage motherboard. So like the very first of the name, right? The very first Rampage ever. Like even me, I think I. I don't even remember the last time I actually saw. I have one at home, but yeah. it doesn't work anymore. But well, I still have one. Like, <laughs> so yeah, so this is this is very interesting. It is so sour. how interesting you can make competitions this way, where the focus is completely different than what we usually have. So very, very, very good actually, very good. So we should check out how high he actually ranks. Just uh, click on the submission link. So we'll go uh, to the submission directly. See? So he got 33 points for being ranked third. So he, he got actually the third fastest uh, CPU in SuperPi 1M yeah. uh, for the on uh, that, on that E5200. Uh, uh, so that's actually why... Um, you can see it here, actually, the detail of where you get your points from. Here. So third using Stop Pentium. Up. Yeah. So the hardware points he got uh, mostly came from uh, this. Uh, that's uh, a plus 140 percent increase, something like this. Yeah, and uh, that's actually quite impressive. If we look at take a look at the screenshot, the SuperPi 1M scores is nine seconds point uh, five hundred ninety four. Yeah, but it's pretty long for SuperPi 1M. <laughs> actually, if you if you ask me, I don't know if you guys have run SuperPi 1M lately, but usually it doesn't take nearly as. Um, yeah. You never go over oh, four it's seconds. Oh, it's finished. Uh, <laughs> it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, the frequency was 5.7 gigahertz. Uh, the bus speed was actually a 456, so that was actually a, 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 a good one. <laughs> a good one. It's a good chip, definitely. You know, if it's number third worldwide in, in the on that benchmark, it's not bad at all. And of course, he was using the Queen Hatching to cool that uh, to the minimum uh, as, uh, as you can. Uh, let's go back to the ranking again. Um, second here to submit scores and have and to be ranked in the stage one of Super Power 1M is uh, Jigmine 1965. Uh, if we look uh, at his submission, he's using a, a more popular CPU. So that might explain why you have uh, less point, even if the score on Super Power is going to be actually faster. Well, yeah, it's a very it's a recently popular CPU, right? It's 4790K. Uh, got launched around June last year. June last year, yeah, yeah that was right. launched at the um, as well. Uh, e refresh as well. Uh, e refresh was launched as the uh, right at during Computex That's right. at the the Intel of uh, a main event. And we were actually there. Uh, yeah. We were actually doing the EM thing and some of the video for them. So, so quite a quite a popular CPU, right? And yeah, very 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 good score as well. So how high did he rank for SuperPi One M? Oh, 
as if you go back to this one and go to submission. So you got 7.4 outward point. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the main reason because it's 34. Out of uh, 142, red. yeah. So that will explain that even if the SuperPy score is like six seconds, so it's like three seconds faster, <laughs> um, the ranking compared to the other people using the same hardware is not as great as the one that um, uh, Raspati was using. So that why uh, that is why uh, even with the nice scores, uh, he can uh, he didn't get any uh, special thing. Uh, Mark 0053 uh, did uh, submissions with the 4790K, although at the same time. Uh, using the Z97OC formula. Uh, yeah. If you look at the, the scores, uh, 6 seconds, 147. Uh, so that's the same CPU, right? Same CPU, but uh, didn't get any hardware points. Uh, let's see why. If we go to the submission page right there, submission page here, it's not ranked. So it's not good enough to be ranked uh, on the systems yet. Yep. So try again. Try again. So you did uh, submit the scores, but you didn't, you didn't get any points for it uh, at this point. Uh, yeah, although when Mr. You're Breeze, too far away, yeah, you don't get any Mr. points. Mr. Breeze, uh, Johan45, and uh, Ocean Kosovo didn't submit any scores in that stage. And yeah, and SuperPy in the scores. So, yeah. so that's uh, that's it for the SuperPy, the stage one. Uh, let's go to stage uh, two now. So stage two was the the target score. Actually, I do I do like the uh, the way the target score was set. Yeah. So so for all the three stages, the World Series was yep. uh, was going from uh, yeah yesterday evening until uh, tomorrow noon, uh, except for the target score. So the target score you had like a three hours uh, three time hours, frame. Yep. That's great. And uh, there is a, a set of uh, a list of benchmarks that are uh, published before the competitions start, and there is a, a list of uh, of targets. So let's say you need to run uh, the the target score can be 3D Mark Vantage between 11k and 13k uh, scores at the end, or it could be Unigen Heaven between 3 uh, 3k and 4k and stuff like this. So you have all the the, the range that you, you, you might uh, end up having to bench for it. Yeah, so the way we did the draw it was simply to randomize of one between six to find a benchmark and then randomize a number in the range that was specified for each. And that's it. That's how you get the stage. And we get the Unigen Even Extreme benchmark to be selected. And uh, the target score was 3510 uh, 3, points. Uh, as you know, or maybe you don't know yet, but you will know in the next few seconds, uh, Unigen even uh, have some decimals, signs, uh, some decimals after the, the scores. Yes. So that yeah. is actually uh, a, a way to make uh, everyone uh, sure that there is no uh, tie. It's in actually the super uh, hard as well once you're in the decimals to get exactly close to to what you have, right? So if you take Fionn Jickman, that, that has like... A very, very almost on the spot score, right? He has a 0 0.1 from the exact target. And he spent literally like, he, he actually got, I think, at 0 0.5 from the target very quickly, quickly like within, within probably the, the first hour of that. And he spends all the rest of the time just getting closer just by 0 0.4. Tweaking <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> what well, to, to get right? Because he had to actually uh, down clock a little bit to, to get there. So that's an overclocking competition where the uh, <laughs> the guys had to downclock his uh, GPU because it was too fast for the benchmark and the target score uh, that was set. Yep. But at the same time, so that was uh, very, very close. Uh, he's, uh, he is actually rank, uh, ranked Super first close, for yeah. this. Uh, so we know that he's the first guy in the stage two because the stage is now closed. Uh, the second guy is uh, Raspati. Uh, that was using the 4790K and using the Radeon 290X yep. uh, graphics cards. Uh, although pretty close, 3509702. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's pretty close, but still not a good Jackman enough. was a lot closer on that one. So it doesn't matter if you are above or below the target score as long as you get the closest to it. That's right. That's and let's point. take a look at uh, Johan 45. Uh, same system. Uh, same 47 same again. Down clock minus 26, 20.64%. Yeah. 20 uh, using the 4790K CPU and uh, having to down clock the GPU to uh, to make sure that you can uh, reach that target score. And yeah. that was uh, 
3510 and 500.1 well you know it's uh it's always interesting because sometimes you have to learn to tweak to go higher but sometimes you have to learn to tweak to go lower and you might just learn some stuff in the process so that's yeah, it's cool so the target score like the stage two the with the target score is uh, is closed so that was the only time limited yep. uh competition in there so uh, i think it opened around 2 p.m uh, and ended around five something yeah. like that uh, sadly, three of the guys didn't uh, manage to submit the scores close enough to, to this one, and that's always the same th uh, the same issue. Either they don't, don't want to even um, uh, make the benchmark run, yeah. or they just say, "Oh, maybe I can get a better score," or "Maybe I can get a better score," or "Maybe I can get a better score," and then, "Oh, I still yeah. have 30 seconds that I didn't add any scores." I think uh, that's a yet. that's a chronic addiction of overclockers that always think yeah sure you can always you know of course yes you can you can keep on running the benchmark until you are satisfied with the score but as long as you haven't posted anything you haven't competed. done anything it's like yeah it, it's like whatever you have done it's it is not registered there's no there's no proof there's no achievement of any sort so that's that's how it is uh, before going to the stage 3, don't forget guys, if you have any questions, you can ask us on the live chat of the Twitch channel. Um, we just want, I just want to make a quick uh, thank you note for all the guys being on the, on the live chat now. Uh, we'll just, just take a few names like this, Droid Insanity, that is uh, actually uh, here quite often when we do live streams. Definitely um, a regular, yes. Yep. Uh, me cool uh, although that was uh, actually uh, st think some stuff about overclocking and uh, the state of Canada on the taxes uh, <laughs> overclocky gyro shrimp Elsec, la la la, la la name look machine the look machine uh, Woody's gun and uh, deck master so uh, thank you guys for being there uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to, uh, to ask us uh, in here we might be answering that on the live so let's move to stage three. Stage three, last stage of the competition. And uh, same again, not over yet, still 13 hour and 23 minutes to go. This one is a Cinebench R15 stage. And like you said before, it's divided by the amount of cores. So what we do, we just take your score. You can submit with any kind of hardware it's you, you have, whatever you have. So uh, dual core, uh, well, yeah, four core CPU or six core CPU, eight core CPU, whatever. And then we just divide your um, your Cinebench score. By the number amount. of core. Of course. No uh, matter if it's activated or not, it's uh, if you have a CPU that have four physical core, that's going to be divided by four. Always. So let's take a look at the person in the fourth place, uh, Raspati. Uh, he's using the uh, Core i7 4790K at 5 uh, gigahertz, yep. and if we look at the settings, uh, he's actually using the uh, the M power from MSI, the uh, Z97 M power uh, uh, mainboard. Um, 984 uh, points for uh, this uh, for this benchmark. Uh, that's uh, okay, but you're gonna divide that by four. Yes. That's the number of core of the CPU. The core count is. Uh, right there on yeah. the on the on the bottom of uh, CPU Z. So of course, in that case, you you better off not deactivating any cores, and you should run with hyper threading. Yeah, because that's how you're gonna get the highest score, especially in a benchmark such as Cinebench. Uh, third person yeah. in the ranking is the Jigman 1965, and he's using the same CPU but 5.5 uh, gigahertz. So of course, that's uh, being faster. Uh, he's using the Z97 OC formula from uh, SRAP. I think that's just a matter of preference on who use which mainboard. Uh, yeah, I think we have, we have pretty much all the brands here uh, today. Yeah, all the brands are represented. It's mainly um, it's mainly a matter of what what you actually have and probably what you're comfortable with. I'm, I know some guys are just very used to bench MSI. Some others are just more these with the ASRock biases and some others are just like a hardcore uh, Asus ROG fans you know it's it's really there's all, all kinds of habits and so there's no it's just a matter of uh, personal I don't, preferences I don't think there's a, a better card it's just they're all very good cards and it's all about how, how well you manage to bench on it uh, let's take a look at the second one, Yohan45, uh, with 1144 points. He's using the same uh, same CPU again at uh, 5.6. Yep. And he's using actually the Asus Maximus 6 Hero. So as you can so see, yeah. another brand and another kind of score. Uh, he actually have a memory that is uh, going lower than... Uh, 
than uh, the other guy, but uh, uh, still managed to go uh, faster, maybe yeah. thanks to the uh, slight increase in, uh, in the frequency. For the That's CPU. right. And let's take a look at the first one, Mark 0053. And using the same CPU, but clocking it 100 megahertz faster. <laughs> so actually, this is funny because that um, stage is not over yet. So oh, if people still want to bench still overnight, yes. uh, you, they can still publish some scores and put some more. Uh, they are all using the same CPU, and they are all... Uh, so then that's going to be the fastest on that CPU here that's going to be the ranking. But maybe someone is going to come in in the ranking with like a special CPU, maybe a 8-core CPU and yeah. a, like a massive score in Cinebench. Well, like you can see, right, if you, if you see, um, well, you don't see it right now on the stream, but there, there's some guys still benching. And so you have a uh, Johan 45 and uh, Jigman that is still pretty much at it. It seems uh, Jigman has, he was saying he was about to leave, but he seems he rebuilt his system already. <laughs> and they filled all the thermal flasks they had. So I think those guys are going to go back into uh, uh, some kind, a few more hours of benching because I know those guys are leaving quite early tomorrow in the early afternoon. So if they want to have a decent night of sleep, they might not bench much tomorrow morning, so they'd rather do all their benching tonight. Uh, if you look at Mark, he seems to be gone. So I think for him it's going to be uh, a, a, good a, good, a good night of sleep and tomorrow morning probably at 9 starting back again the benching until 12. Well, we will see how that happened there. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, uh, the stage leader for uh, this Sunny Bench R15 is Mark. Um, the stage leader for the previous one was Chickman with the, the very close Unigen Event score. And the uh, leaders uh, for the first stage that is still not uh, still not over is yeah. Rapat, uh, Ra Rasparty. Uh, that's good, but who is in the lead for the complete competition at this time? Oh, well, you know, it's a depend of how much points you got. But so Rasparty, he he got a lot of points for his hardware hardware point ranking on Superpie. So. He is the one in the lead right now. With That's actually the only thing that makes him in the lead right now. Because well, if, if he would have he would like, like, yes. uh, like uh, 20 points less in that, uh, maybe use a different CPU, like yeah. use the like, like the 4790K or stuff like this, he would have like maybe s uh, six or seven points. Yeah. And will not be in, uh, in the first place for that one. Well, right now, if you look, so uh, Jakeman is uh, leading the, the second stage. So he's not going to get more than 25 points. And but he can get five ex, uh, like ten extra points from the from the last stage in Cinebench, so it's it's still doable. But he's not going to go as high as sixty three point two. So for him, uh, I think uh, second place is definitely going to be the the highest he can get, unless there's someone coming up winning the night with something more than thirty three point two hardware points. Eventually, uh, Johan forty five. And I think that's about it for the people that could pretend to. Yeah, go actually, up. Mr. Riz uh, is using uh, AMD FM2 mainboard, so yeah, I don't think there is. Uh, yeah. I think you can get some hardware point, but not uh, yeah, not, not that much. Less popular. Hardware, yeah, it's yeah. less popular, so you cannot get the same amount of points. Uh, OCN Kosovar actually had some issue with his mainboard, so it was mm. giving like a zero zero at boot, so it was uh, kind of like uh, I cannot do anything with that. Uh, so. Well, so that's we'll too bad right? he didn't, although had the opportunity to submit uh, scores yeah. in the uh, Unigen Evan uh, target score. Yeah, I think uh, even if uh, Raspar, for example, improves his score, he might just get five extra points or something like that. I'm not sure he's going to jump up three rankings on the no. Cine bench. So I think that the top three is pretty much uh, known by now. Uh, but I think uh, so, yeah. there is uh, a few um, uh, incertitudes between the Jigman and Yohan uh, 45 yet. And yeah. actually that would be funny if uh, Yohan 45 is benching the uh, E5200 and yeah. get a better score <laughs> sure, yeah. than Dress Party. Yeah, he's still setting up. Yeah, so he's actually yeah, setting up his system right now to, uh, to start benching again. So we will see what, uh, what happens uh, tomorrow morning for that. Um, let's take a quick break and we're gonna s come back and uh, talk a little bit about each of the guys here. Uh, how do they rank uh, in the country? 
uh, where did they come from, stuff like this. Uh, yeah. What did they? Um, what uh, are their key achievements, for instance? Yeah. Well, what did they try to do over the weekend? So let's be back in a second.